In this video, we're going to attach the arm to the rest of the battle butt and then animate it. I'll start by going to my orthographic side view and I'll select the first bone in the sequence of the skeleton we created and I'll start to place it into position with the battle butt. I'll place it about in the middle of the body and then I'll go to my front view and make sure it's pretty well centered right over the middle of the eye. So if we went to our perspective view we would see something like this. Now if in the event the main bone comes out of the bottom of the BattleBot's body you can go ahead and you can just leave it that way. But if you wanted to, if you recall in the last tutorial by holding down D on the keyboard we could select any one of these little joints and move it where we want it to be. So it doesn't have to be inside the body, it will not show up during the animation process. Back to my perspective view, I want to parent the BattleBot arm now to the body of the robot. I'm going to select the sequence, making sure all the bones are selected by clicking on the main bone. And then I'm going to shift select BattleBot body, hit the up arrow to get the whole group, and then hit P on the keyboard. And what that means now is if I was to select the body of our robot and hit the up arrow, the arm now follows the entire character. Now we need one other element so that we can kind of control this without having to click in the middle. I'm going to go to my top view and I'm going to introduce a NURB circle. And then in my perspective view, I'll make sure it's down towards the bottom of the feet. And these rings would not show up in the animation, so it'll be easier to select and move this character if we want it on screen based on that ring rather than having to click and then hit the up arrow. I'll select the robot's body, hit the up arrow to make sure I got everything, arm included. Then I'll shift select the circle and I'll hit P to parent. Now if I deselect and select the ring, I should be able to move it just by selecting that ring. There's one other thing we want to do before we start to animate the arm. And that's parent the IK to that ring as well. So I'll select one of the brown lines from the IK at the tip of the arm, shift select the nerve circle and hit P to parent. Now everything will follow. If we keyframe the arm now, which we will do next, it'll stay in the context of this circle. Now that we've rigged and parented all the elements of our character, we can now keyframe and animate the IK handle. In the side view, I'm going to key the Y and the Z axes for translate. In the channel box, I'll right click on translate Y, key selected, translate Z, key selected. At frame one, you'll see a red line representing both keyframes. In the rest of our animation, we cycled all the elements with the same keyframe at the beginning of the animation at frame one and the same keyframe at frame 30 at the end of the animation timeline. Holding the shift key, I can drag through the keyframe at frame one and right clicking on the red box, I can choose copy. I'll go to frame 30 and I'll right click and choose paste and paste. Going to frame 15, I'll now move the IK kinematic icon with the arm to a different position where it's probably folded more. If I were to play through what I have now, I've got the arm reaching out in front of it and returning back to its original position from frame 1. This will allow us to repeat this cycle inside of After Effects seamlessly for as long as we need. We should have something like this.